the discussion of interface between donor and acceptor uh, groups. And he's looking how the ability of church transfer depends on the linker between them. Yes, that is exactly what I'll be talking about. Uh, so specifically, I'm going to be looking at the boundary between uh, cesium lead bromide perovskite and uh, two different types of titanium di dioxide. Um, so I guess why am I looking at this? Um, in order to make a solar cell out of perovskite, you essentially need to surround it with a hole transport material and an electron, electron transport material. Um, the reason for that is that, I mean, if you shine light on a perovskite, cause excitations, that's all fine and good, but you're not going to end up getting any current. You're not going to be able to build a potential difference between your two terminals unless there's an inherent uh, preference for the direction of that current. Um, so what you want to do is set up a system so that when you do create excitations, the electrons will naturally want to flow one direction and the holes will naturally want to flow to the other direction. Um, so in particular, I'm looking at this interface here. <clears throat> Um, so these are the two models that I'm working with. Um, we've got the titanium dioxide on the top and the perovskite on the bottom. Um, and we have a uh, isopropanol linker group in this case. And we have hydroxyl linker groups in this case. And we're just looking at the, the differences between these and just trying to characterize them generally. Um, so these are some density of, densities of states, I guess, of, uh, of the separated systems and then combined. So these are all the isopropanol model. And uh, these are all the hydroxyl model. Um, so the, the perovskite in both cases are essentially identical. There are some slight differences between the titanium dioxide, but largely they have the same structure. Um, you can see that when you do combine these systems, you actually get a different uh, shape, I guess, of the density of states. You end up uh, losing a lot of these states from the titanium dioxide. Um, it suggests that there is a significant interaction between the two when you put them close together. Um, so some of the things that I can pull from that data are uh, just the, the total energies of each system, the, the HOMO and LUMO gap, the uh, Fermi energy. Um, and we can see that the <clears throat> in both cases, you do actually reduce the, the HOMO LUMO gap. Um, but in the uh, hydroxyl case, we see that there is actually a smaller gap, which means that you'll be able to get a wider frequency of, uh, of solar radiation that you could potentially convert into electric current. Um, and I calculated these out. This one was uh, like 494 nanometer wavelength, I believe, and this one was 430 something. So it's not a huge difference, but it suggests that there is at least something of a difference there. Um, <clears throat> So uh, these are just some plots of uh, orbitals, and then these are one-dimensional potentials that um, are obtained by integrating over uh, the like x and y dimensions just to yield essentially a one-dimensional probability of finding an electron in some region. Um, so in the isopropanol case, you can see that the, uh, oh, I guess you can't really see that. So these are the, um, I can't remember which is which. I think it's the same between them. Uh, the blue orbitals are the uh, is the HOMO. The red ones are the LUMO. Um, and you can see that those are both localized on the titanium dioxide in the isopropanol case. Whereas in the hydroxyl case, you actually do have uh, you have the HOMO in the perovskite, and then the LUMO would be found in the titanium dioxide. Um, this would be preferable because as you do create an excitation, if the electron jumps into the next orbital, it will actually move over to the titanium dioxide, whereas in this case, the charge doesn't actually end up going anywhere, so you don't get that desired property that we're looking for. Um, <clears throat> so this suggests that the hydroxyl is probably better in that regard as well. This is kind of a schematic of what I was just talking about, um, where the, the lowest energy jump would be just from uh, titanium dioxide to itself, whereas in this case, you would actually transfer the charge over to the uh, titanium dioxide from the perovskite. Um, so I was only able to get one of my molecular dynamics jobs to run without failing immediately. Uh, and this is the density of states after doing uh, molecular dynamics at 1,000 Kelvin for, I think, like 329 femtoseconds. Um, so I guess the general shape of the density of states doesn't change that much. You just kind of get more states over uh, in the uh, the conduction band, um, but it does actually seem to increase the 
the range over which you can actually get absorption. Um, you kind of end up getting this whole bit here that doesn't make an appearance in this end. Um, and these are these two density states are the same ones from before. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really know what else to say about that at the moment. And uh, this is the uh, the movie of that molecular dynamics run, I guess. So, in conclusion, um, the evidence does seem to suggest that the hydroxyl model is the the more suitable uh, model for for uh, photovoltaic applications. Um, just because you do have a smaller energy gap, you do have uh, actually charge transfer happening, or at least it's more likely to be happening. Um, I feel like there's one other thing, but I can't remember what it is right now. Okay, then the last thing is to do the problem. Any questions? Yes. I have just a technical questions. I was not able to understand. What is your really, can you show me on this uh, structure? What is your hydroxide? Uh, Hydroxyls and what is your uh, isopropanes? Is it ligands on a? Yeah, it's it's strictly ligands the, on a on a on a. The surface is your titanium dioxide surface, right? And the, the quantum dot is your perovskite or backward. Which one is which one? I'm completely confused. Uh, which? What is your quantum like the kind fine structure? What is it? Is it uh, titanium dioxide or perovskite? Um, I guess I'm not sure what exactly this is. I'm about. also not sure what we're talking about. So you have a surface and you have a zero dimensional structure. Agree? A zero dimensional structure? Yeah, because it's confined from all three directions. Okay. No periodicity along neither of these axes. So it's zero dimensional structure. Okay. What we usually call nanoparticles or quantum dots or yeah. nanocrystals. So what is your nanocrystal? Is it titanium dioxide crystal or it's a perovskite crystal? Oh, this would be the crystalline structure. I guess I'm I'm thinking about this as uh, just basically taking a chunk of like a thin film. Um, so where is your titanium dioxide? This is the titanium dioxide. So you have here. quantum dots made from titanium dioxide. Yes. And okay. the surface yeah. is made from 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 fumes or whatever surfaces of perovskite. Yes. Then again, your orbitals. If you go back to the orbitals. Here, mm -hmm. uh, so you on the uh, on the one side, your orbitals look like they're completely localized on your nanocrystal, yes. on a nanoparticle, right? <clears throat> and on the second, is it like hybridized? Like what is orbitals red both and what on is, the surface? What is, what is color codes? Um, is, so yeah. the the blue in this case would represent the uh, the highest occupied orbital, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's and the red. But the red would be the lowest unoccupied. So if so, you the have... lowest level excitation would mean that an electron would go from the blue band to the red band. Okay, so in the first case, you have both home and Duma on your nanoparticle, and on the other case, you have one being localized on the nanoparticle, and the other is localized on the uh, on the surface. And this is what you call the charge transfer. Right. But my understanding there energy of absorption is very different between these two materials. So you can easily tune the absorption just, let's say, on the range of uh, of your uh, perovskite or on the range of your quantum dot, because it looks like your energetically they're very different, right? So you can imagine that you're really exciting just one system rather than both of them. Okay, so you're assuming like a fixed Like I'm assuming that, that in the case when you have your home energy, being on a one on material, one energy, I guess. when your home is in one material and your mm -hmm. lumo on the other material, this transition is optically inactive. It's a optical, you cannot excite such state because it's optically inactive, right? You can okay. excite the states yeah. which are either both localized on a perovskite and then it would be perovskite transition, mm -hmm. or both localized on a quantum dot, and then this would be your quantum dot transition. And then the idea is when you excite one material, then the charge transfer should go from not between homoluma, but kind of inside the band, from unoccupied state if it's electron transfer, or from occupied state if it's a whole transfer. Like I don't understand your definition of a charge transfer. Looks kind of usually, and what's the purpose of, like this charge transfer state will not provide you any um, good things for the, for the current. Because your idea is that you, like th this, construction of the material 
is based on the idea that you use one as absorption material, right. as a synthesizer, yeah. and the other would be your contacts. And it looks like probably the three-dimensional surface or whatever two-dimensional surface would be your contact, right? And then your titanium dioxide would be the the synthesizer in this case. Uh, and then you need a charge transfer mm -hmm. from the titanium dioxide to the either in a both occupied state or both unoccupied states. I mean, after 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 you optimize it, of course, you create a hole, and then hole goes. Uh, then then hole transfer means electron from one material goes to the whole state of the other material. But not like you exciting this charge transfer state because such charge transfer state would be optically negative. You might have to run through that a little bit slower for me. I guess that was kind of quick. <laughs> um, so the the perovskite is the optical absorber in this case. The, the titanium dioxide is not in and of itself optically active. Then what's um, the purpose of your titanium dioxide? It's uh, essentially, I guess this is sort of what you would want is so that you have an electron in here that gets excited and you want it to get naturally pulled away from the perovskite into the uh, titanium dioxide. What for? Uh, to create a current. Current? Where? Or potential difference. <clears throat> you, you just create a charge on a quantum dot. That's it. It's not called current. There would be a terminal attached to the other end. To, to, to the quantum titanium dots? Titanium dioxide. To titanium dioxide, quantum dots will be something like you will have some lab on a titanium dioxide? Well, I mean, when I actually made these, I made thin films. So it wasn't necessarily. <clears throat> Like quantum dots, I well, guess. I think. I mean, physically, I guess I don't know exactly well, how I would make this. You probably um, need really look on a uh, on a Gretzel cells just to get the main concept and understand the idea why people really have this kind of you know molecule and the surface or whatever nanoparticle and the surface. Okay. Because I think conceptually you are you are you are you're really doing something not what <laughs> is supposed to be for the so not at least for the solar cells. Mm -hmm. Because again, in solar cells, the idea is that you're exciting one material, right? And mm -hmm. after excitation is done, then the charge transfer happens from that, let's say, if you excite, you have excited electron on the uh, valence band, on the conduction band, right, mm -hmm. of whatever, of the molecule. And then this electron will go to the, usually you'll go to the semiconductor, right? right. Which has plain kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the, the wave like electronic structure where you're really kind of creating a current and then it goes to the leads. Um, or, it, or it can be hole transfer, then your hole, which means electron from titanium surface, will be taking the place of the excited hole in your one. So this is how the Gretzel cells works. In your kind of suggestion how these guys should work, I'm completely lost what exactly is the purpose of your titanium dioxide. And why you need really to excite, like as I said, like this excitation, which you say is good because it's a charge transfer state, it is a charge transfer state. But such state is optically inactive because your orbitals not really overlap, and your dipole moment for such transition should be very, very low. Okay. More questions? It was not a question, it was a comment. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think conceptually, the idea why and what uh, the motivation behind all these things looks kind of completely mixed up. More questions? Uh, Okay, then let's uh, thank London once again. <laughs> so, the next uh, presentation is uh, the uh, last one in the sequence of uh, solid materials and it is slow transition to.